Hi. OK, so I want to start by asking you guys a question as soon as my slides go up. Oh, there it is. OK. So I want to start by asking you guys a question. How many of you have had to fill out some sort of web form where you've been asked to read a distorted sequence of characters like this one? <laughs> Outstanding. Right. How many of you found it really, really annoying? <laughs> All right, good. Well, I invented that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> OK. That thing is called a captcha. And the reason is there is to make sure that you, the entity filling out the form, are actually a human and not some sort of computer program that was written to submit the form millions and millions of times. The reason it works is because humans, at least non-visually impaired humans, have no trouble reading these distorted characters, whereas computer programs can't do it as well yet. So for example, in the case of Ticketmaster, the reason you have to type these squiggly characters is to prevent scalpers from writing programs that can buy millions of tickets two at a time. Okay, now, captures are used all over the internet. And it turns out that approximately 200 million of these are typed every day by people around the world. Now, when I first heard that number, I was quite proud of myself. I thought, look at the impact that I've had in the world. Uh, then, then I started feeling bad. Uh, <laughs> See, here's the thing. Each time you type one, not only is it annoying, it, it also takes about 10 seconds of your time. And if you multiply 10 seconds by 200 million, you get that humanity as a whole is wasting about 500,000 hours every day. <laughs> So I started feeling bad. Uh, but then I started thinking, is there any way in which we can use this effort for something that is good for humanity? See, here's the thing. During those 10 seconds while you're typing a CAPTCHA, your brain is doing something amazing. Your brain is doing something that computers cannot yet do. So can we get you to do something useful? Another way of putting it is, is there some humongous problem that we cannot yet get computers to solve, but that somehow we can split into tiny 10-second chunks such that each time you solve one of these CAPTCHAs, you help solve a little bit of that problem. And the answer to that is yes, and this is what we're doing now. So what you may not know is that nowadays, while you're typing a CAPTCHA, not only are you authenticating yourself as a human, but in addition, you're also helping us to digitize books. Let me explain how that works. Uh, so there's a lot of projects out there trying to digitize books. Google has one. Amazon now with the Kindle is trying to digitize books. And basically, the way it works is you start with an old physical book thing. You've seen those things, like a book. You've seen that? <laughs> yeah. OK. So you start with a book, and then you scan it. Now, scanning a book is like taking a digital photograph of every page of the book. It gives you an image for every page of the book. The next step in the process is that the computer needs to be able to decipher the words in that image so that it can understand what's in the book. The problem is that the computer cannot recognize a lot of the words, especially when the book is older because the ink has faded. The computer cannot recognize approximately 30% of the words. So what we're doing now is we're taking all of the words that the computer cannot recognize, and we're getting people to read them for us while they type captures on the internet. OK, so next time you type one of these CAPTCHAs, the words that you're actually typing are actually coming directly from books that, be, that, we're, that we're digitizing that the computer could not recognize. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> now, here's the thing. The reason there are two words instead of just one nowadays is because one of the words is a word for which we already know the answer. We use that word to figure out whether you're a human or not. The other word is the new word that we just got out of a book. We didn't know what it was. And what, what we do is we give you both of them. We say, please type both. We don't tell you which one's which. And if you type the correct word for the one for which we knew the answer, we assume you're a human. And also, we get some confidence that you typed the other word correctly. And if we repeat this process to like 10 different people, and all of them you know, agree on that new word, we get one more word basically digitized. So this is how this process works. Now, it's been extremely successful. We're digitizing approximately 100 million words a day, which is the equivalent of about 2 million books a year being digitized one word at a time by just having people type captures on the internet. So this is what we're doing now. Of course, since we're doing so many words per day, funny things can happen. And this is especially true because see, nowadays we're giving two randomly chosen English words right next to each other. This is a recipe for disaster. Uh, <laughs> so for example, we showed this word. There's nothing wrong with this word. It's the word Christians. But if you put it on, along with another randomly chosen word, bad things can happen. So we showed that. <laughs> Uh, but it's even worse because you know, there's millions of websites that use CAPTCHAs. The particular one where we happened to show this happened to be called the Embassy of the Kingdom of God. <laughs> Oops. Here's another really bad one, uh, johnedwards.com. <laughs> Oops. So we keep on insulting people left and right every day. 
Uh, but it's not just insults. It's also just interesting things. And this has actually given rise to a huge internet meme that tens of thousands of people have participated in, and it's called Captcha Art. If you haven't seen it, here's how it works. Okay, basically the idea is if you're surfing the internet and suddenly you see a captcha that you think is somewhat interesting, like this one, <laughs> what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take a screenshot. Then, of course, write the captcha because you're helping us digitize books. Uh, but after that, you're supposed to draw a picture based on this. So for example, here's a picture. Now, there are tens of thousands of these. Uh, some of them are very cute, like this one. Oh. Some of them are funnier, like this one. And some others, like paleontological schwizzle, they contain Snoop Dogg. This number, I really like this number, 900 million. This is the total number of distinct people that have helped us digitize at least one word out of a book to recapture. So over 10% of the world's population. And it is numbers like these that motivate my research. And in fact, the, the question that really motivates my work is the following. If you look at humanity's really large-scale achievements, these really, really big things that humanity has done throughout history, for example, building the pyramids of Egypt, or the Panama Canal, or putting a man on the moon, here's the thing, there's a weird thing. All of them were done with approximately the same number of people. All of them were done with about 100,000 people. It's weird. You, you may want to ask, why is it the case that all of them were done with about the same number of people? And the reason for that is because before the internet, coordinating, let alone paying more than 100,000 people, was essentially impossible. But see, now with the internet, I've just shown you a project where we've got 900 million people to participate for something that is good for humanity. So the question that motivates my work is, if we can put a man on the moon with 100,000, what can we do with 100 million? Now, based on this question, uh, we've been working on a lot of different research projects. Let me tell you about one that, we, that I've been working on for the last couple of years. We haven't launched, but it's going to launch in approximately 32 days and, and a half. Uh, <laughs> it, and, and the project started with this question. The question is, how do we get 100 million people translating the web into every major language for free? Okay, there's a lot of things to say about this question. First of all, translating the web. So, you know, the, language right, the, the web right now is partitioned into multiple languages. A very large fraction is in English, and if you don't know English, you can't access it, but it, you know, there, it's in other languages too, and if you don't know them, you can't access it. So I want to translate all of the web into every major language. Now, the first thing you may wonder, especially for computer scientists like me, is why can't we get computers to do this? I mean, there are some translation programs that are getting a little better. Why can't we get computers to do this? The reason is because they're just not good enough yet, and they won't be for the next 30 or so years. Just to show you how bad it can be, I'm going to show you a computer translation of something that we found in a forum post. They were, ask, they were trying to ask a question about computer programming. It is translated from Japanese into English using the best computer translation algorithm out there. I'm just going to let you read. Uh, so they just start by saying, you know, sorry, it's a computer translation. Uh, remember, this is a question about programming. Okay? So the, here's the preamble to the question. Here's the first part of the question. Here's my favorite part of the question. And here's my favorite part of the whole message. OK. So for, forget computers for now. So we need humans. Uh, so what, we, what I want to do is I want to get 100 million people translated the web into every major language, and I want to get that for free. I don't want to have to pay anybody. Okay? Now, if this is what you want to do, you pretty quickly realize that you're going to run into two pretty major obstacles. Okay? First of all, it's a lack of bilinguals. I don't even know if there exists 100 million people out there who use the web who are bilingual enough to help me translate. This is a big problem. The second problem is a lack of motivation. How are we going to get 100 million people to translate for free? Now, we were stuck on these two problems for a while until we actually realized there's a way to solve both of these problems with the same solution. That is, there's a way to kill two, two birds with one stone. And the way to do that is to transform language translation into something that millions of people want to do, and that also helps with the problem of lack of bilinguals, and that is language education. Okay, so it turns out that today, 
There are over 1.2 billion people around the world learning a foreign language. People really, really want to learn a foreign language. And it's not just because they're being forced to do so in school. For example, in the United States alone, there are over 5 million people who have paid over $500 for software to learn a foreign language. So people really, really want to learn a foreign language. So what we've been working on is this new website. It's called Duolingo. And the idea with Duolingo is that you can learn a foreign language while simultaneously translating the web. Okay, so you learn by doing. That's the idea. And to explain how the whole thing works, I'm just going to show, show you a very short video. And let's see if that works. It's a big world out there, billions of us trying to live, love, prosper, and make sense of our brief time on this planet. Since the dawn of humanity, we've been passing information from one person to another through a common language. Unfortunately, you can't communicate with others without knowing or learning their language first. A similar issue has manifested on the web, where text can be penned in dozens of languages, each of which demands a reader's fluency. We've developed an elegant solution to both problems, a way for you to learn a language for free, while at the same time helping to translate text from the web, enabling a wealth of language-shackled information to be liberated for all of humanity. It's called Duolingo. Here's how it works. Let's say you're a native English speaker who wants to learn Spanish. We start by giving you a sentence from a Spanish website and asking you to translate it. Wait, back up. How can you translate a language you don't know? First, Duolingo only gives you sentences that fit your language level. Beginners get the really simple sentences from the web, and advanced users get the more complex ones. This way, everybody becomes a valuable translator. And second, if you're really lost, you can always see possible translations for words you don't know. Afterwards, Duolingo helps you understand and memorize the words you hovered over through educational examples. You can also vote on the quality of other students' translations, which helps you learn by seeing how others translated the same sentence. And because you create valuable translations while you learn, we return the favor by offering Duolingo completely free of charge. No ads, no hidden fees, no subscriptions, just free. To put the potential benefit of Duolingo into perspective, think about this. If one million people would use Duolingo to learn, the entirety of English Wikipedia could be translated to Spanish in just 80 hours. Duolingo, learn a language while translating the web. Thank you.